Hello and welcome to Lecture M 6.12, Searching the Web Tools and Techniques. This lecture applies to students in Dublin, Bahrain and Penang, although library access details will differ on each site, as usual. Before we start, um, I came across a couple of news stories that I thought the class might be interested in. Uh, firstly, from Wired magazine, um, an industry standard really uh, printed and developed and published in the United States. Um, and the title is The Google Doctor is a reminder of how badly the internet does real medicine. The link is um, here. Have a look at that. But two, uh, two sentences in this uh, article really jump out at me. Uh, people aren't about to stop googling for a vague tingling in my left arm anytime soon as I've discussed in other lectures um, and the, there are published results for this people google their symptoms um, even before or after seeing a doctor so that's going to keep going no doubt about that but um, there are now rumors that Google are um, about to enter into this market to try and link consumers uh, don't forget Google uses our consumers primarily um, with doctors and the article says one limit to the whole idea go read the article it's very short uh, one limit however is already evident uh, to do medicine well doctors often have to be able to reach out and touch someone for real uh, how true um, so that basic tenet will always be there but the idea that uh, health is a huge market um, and obviously people like Google are going to keep trying to establish some kind of fo foothold in it online. Um, the other story that came up just earlier in the week on BBC News in the technology section, there's the link if you wish to read the article again, quite short, Instagram for doctors. Um, and it says an app which enables healthcare professionals to share photos is to be rolled out across Western Europe by the end of the year. The app is designed to enable doctors to share pictures of their patients, both with each other and medical students. Um, I doubt very much if any of... Uh, uh, I, w I wonder how many patients would be happy about that. Um, so this is something... Instagram indeed wasn't really on the horizon maybe a year, two years ago. And here it is looking to uh, make its way into the healthcare sector. Have a read. What do you think? Do you think that's a good idea? Um, maybe you post that on the forum. Um, anyway, have a look at those before. Uh, so let's get into the lecture. So the lecture learning outcomes are as follow. To demonstrate uh, the ability to use a general search engine, uh, demonstrate the ability to use healthcare search engines, to demonstrate the ability to refine a search, to understand the term deep web, and to understand mesh terms. So uh, before I get into it completely, I would just like to thank my colleague, Mr. Paul Murphy, who is the Deputy Librarian in RCSI here in Dublin. Um, he has helped me with the content of this lecture. I am in his debt. Um, and again, as I said at the start of the lecture, all students are advised to spend time uh, locally getting familiar with the library resources, which differ between Dublin, Penang and, Penang and Bahrain. So, um, the issue here, I think, for a lot of students is that we take searching very much for granted. We want to know something, we just pop it into the address bar or uh, search bar of our browser and up comes some relevant information. And I really don't want to sound in any way uh, patronising to you, but let's just take this back to first principles for a bit and uh, let's look at how we do this type of thing. So when we want to find out something, we ask somebody, we ask somebody else, we look it up. Uh, in a book perhaps uh, but think what kind of book would you look this up in uh, I'm just looking at my desk here there's a there's a phone directory uh, it's still wrapped in clear plastic um, it there's two of them uh, why do I have them I've no idea I'll probably end up recycling them there was a time that that book was the most important one to have to look up somebody's phone number not anymore uh, could we draw a parallel between medical textbooks and the, the uh, telephone directory? 
uh, I wonder, I think we might be able to at some level. Uh, if we go online, where do we start? Uh, do we use a search engine? And uh, <clears throat> in terms of library science, if you like, we're looking, we want to call search engines keyword search engines. We're looking for certain keywords, although we tend to search in a more literal way. How do I get the train to Cork? Uh, what times are the flights to Abu Dhabi? That kind of, that's how we might search, but <clears throat> these search engines work on keywords. Or indeed, as the great thief of time that we have, we wander around, we click aimlessly, and we go from looking for the time of the train timetable to looking at YouTube videos of cats very quickly. And all of a sudden, an hour has gone by, and we still haven't booked the ticket. Or we go, we know that rcsi.ie or um, pubmed.gov uh, is a good place to go. We find a uh, URL, we type it in. We might hear it on the radio or see it on an ad or uh, take a picture of it perhaps and go and visit it later. Or we might uh, go to a website and start there and find links within that website. Um, and in many ways, just look, there's so many ways to find this information. And a lot of the time, we just don't think about it. We just do it. Uh, and what I'm hoping is in this lecture, we might think a little bit deeper on how we find information. And we look at issues of quality and authority, reliability and validity. So here we are. We're healthcare professionals and uh, we are in this space somewhere. So if we're taking a journey... Uh, from the public web, we're searching on the public web, as we progress uh, as consumers to guidelines, to evidence-based information, to peer-reviewed journals, authority, reliability and validity increases. Uh, if we are at uh, medical journals and we look at, okay, these are very high quality, uh, we know that they're peer-reviewed, uh, they can uh, stand up to scrutiny, as we go back through uh, the uh, types of information on the internet, we end up back at the public web or the consumer level, the quality may or will decrease. So we're looking at a balance between these two, and we want to be in this high quality uh, sphere uh, with authority, reliability, and validity. Um, but not all of your patients are any quick information. You could go and read this article from the New England Journal of Medicine. That's not how it works. So we're kind of looking to be in and around this space, guidelines and evidence-based studies, uh, good quality information, perhaps, if that's what we want. We have th these two men to thank. Uh, I think pretty much everybody knows who they are. Um, the uh, inventors and primary shareholders in Google. Uh, this is their paper. Um, there, if you want to download it and read it, that's what started it all. And, of course, we need to tell you that to Google, or Googling is now in the lexicon. It is in the Oxford English Dictionary. We're now at a stage that a commercial product has uh, um, entered into the psyche and is used on a day-to-day -day basis. I am not in favour of one search engine over another. And I appreciate that other people may use other search engines. We're talking about searching technique. Um, but what are people doing online? There's a really uh, handy little site here, interesting site, alexa.com, A-L-E-X-A.com. And here globally, what's going on? So what are people doing? Google searching, social networking, video, social networking searching. Uh, this is a Chinese uh, social network search engine, uh, Wikipedia reference, we've spoken about that before, people looking but not editing, uh, another Chinese site here, and LinkedIn, a, uh, if you like, a professional version of Facebook to link people in business or professional services. Um, and one year later, that information was from 2013, this is 2014. The difference uh, here is that this site, alexa.com, is now owned by Amazon. Uh, and not a whole lot has changed, except that we see that Twitter is now gone up the rankings of the top 500 sites. So, again, search social network video, search social network, social network, reference if you like, commerce, and social network, and I wonder if Amazon 
have promoted themselves in this top site. So we, we don't know, it's very subjective. The point is that this search engine or this link listing is now commercial. If we dig into uh, this alexa.com for health, um, it has categorized, um, uh, these are obviously the, the site's categories, what they're based on or how it's categorized is another matter. It's very difficult to tell, <coughs> excuse me. You can see that uh, we will get uh, the addiction website, quite what that means again, I'm, I don't know. But if we look at the top websites for health information, uh, US government, WebMD, uh, the National Library of Medicine, which we've PubMed, which we've spoken about, My Fitness Pal, don't know what that is, online food diary, uh, food database, Dieting, I suppose, Mayo Clinic, uh, Center for Disease Control, Medline Plus, Macola, don't know, never visited it, um, and uh, their Medicine Net. But uh, to go reference other lectures, US government, PubMed, um, CDC, and Medline Plus. So uh, these May, have, may or may not be known to you and if you uh, you need to become familiar with these websites uh, for your professional working life so they're in the top 10 uh, but information flows ebbs and flows uh, things become important uh, things go viral and that's uh, I suppose uh, you know it's a term used on the internet which of course relates directly back to medicine uh, and there's a very interesting site here Google Trends uh, based on Google search shows how often a particular search term is entered relative to the so total search volume across various regions of the world. Uh, it is just type in Google Trends, you'll find it. So what we've done here is looked at B or C A, which is a mutation uh, in one or two types of genes, B or C A1 and B or C A2. Uh, and harmful mutations of this gene produce hereditary uh, breast, ovarian cancer, breast ovarian cancer syndrome in affected families. So uh, you may have heard of this term uh, as uh, it was highlighted by um, Angelo, Angelina Jolie's medical history where she decided to have a double mastectomy. And you can see uh, if you go along this timeline it will give you instances of where uh, data may have spiked or where Google determines that it was interested and here at this point here where it starts to climb significantly uh, around uh, mid early last year is where uh, it was reported where I say uh, Angelina Jolie had a double mastectomy and of course there are very positive uh, connotations for this and that it has been reported that uh, testing for this gene has gone up uh, the term BRCA is fairly prevalent on Twitter, on Facebook. So in some ways, in many ways, the uh, this news, as it spread across the internet, had a direct effect on other people, uh, a very positive effect, where people considered that they may have to have, do something about this. Um, the reason the Huffington, po Huffington Post is cited here is just an example. Uh, this is aggregated from many other examples. More... Um, uh, recent if you like is Ebola and we can see here tipping along for years not much going on uh, the graph the scale I'm not quite sure what it was but we get up here and it's just taken a um, story from the Belfast Telegraph again it's just indicative and we see here that uh, late last year uh, the uh, or early this year the um, uh, WHO the World Health Organization declared an emergency and off it goes off the scale. So this affects the type of data that's available and it also affects the search engines which is most crucial. Uh, and the uh, Google Trends had been used to model diseases and this PDF is in the uh, course notes. Um, so where the uh, Google Flu Trends, GFT, is to use search uh, keyword trends from google.com to produce a daily estimate or now cast a spot an on the spot forecast of the occurrence of flu two weeks in advance of the publication of the official surveillance data um, so people were using this data and guess what 
uh, they got it wrong. Uh, during the 2012-2013 flu season, uh, Google Flu Trends got it wrong. As the company documents in a recent published analysis, which is here, you can read it, um, Google overestimated the incidence of flu in the US by more than six percentage points. That is a huge uh, uh, difference. So the they put it at 10.5%. It was actually at 4.5%. And what went wrong? Two words, the media. Great, let's blame the media. A lot of people blame the media. And in fact, we're all contributing to the media to some degree. Google says it has concluded that the disease detection, its disease detection algorithms were susceptible to heightened media coverage. Uh, and this is really very significant in that the internet is influenced by what goes on, search engines are influenced by what's going on, and search results are interested in what's going on, and therefore patients or health consumers will be influenced by what goes on online. Um, so it's not static, things are changing. And importantly, although from uh, uh, about a year ago, this study, uh, social networking is now by uh, far the uh, number one activity online. Uh, we're looking at social networks, and I, I suspect those numbers have grown. I tried to look up a reference for uh, most recently, but uh, couldn't find it. So we're looking at uh, social networks. And Twitter has uh, got a lot, a lot more use. Okay, Facebook has decreased, but you can see it outstrips pretty much what everybody is doing. This is the main driver on the internet and if it is social networking and people are picking up on fluid uh, maybe not regulated or peer-reviewed information then of course uh, the information is going to be influenced by what's going on so we have a cause and effect there perhaps uh, between the two so uh, next up I just want to talk about how search engines put information together uh, this is slightly technical, but important information all the same. Um, there is a, excuse me, a short video here, um, how Google search works. Um, it's very straightforward, very simple. Um, interesting, nonetheless, take a look at that. Just tells you how Google puts this together. Now, of course, Google is not going to give away all of the secrets. Uh, this is a commercial venture. They produce search results. They sell these results. That, uh, well, they sell them by hosting advertising. So uh, it is some information. It's not all technical information, but it's very interesting nonetheless. And essentially, what a, the way most uh, search engines will work, they will go... Uh, they send an automated small bits of code called spiders and off they go. They categorize websites, they build lists of words and note where they were found. Uh, they put these together as indexes, they compress or encode the data and then store them. And these web spiders or crawlers as they're known, they're all over the internet. There's hundreds of millions of them collecting information continuously uh, to build a picture of what's going on. Uh, the they re they retrieve selected data, and that's very much down to how the page is written. It's called metadata. Uh, this is if you've ever designed a web page, you know that if you're going to optimize how people see your website, you need to put hidden data behind the website. This is called metadata, um, and that data, along with some keywords, are returned to the search engine database. Uh, which allows it to be searched. Now, really importantly in all of this is the business of search engine optimization. And uh, companies spend uh, considerable amounts of money making sure that people can see them to promote their presence online. There's one thing designing your website in that you have a great idea to sell uh, your uh glass blown hand hand handcrafted glass business your hobby or your model air, air airplane kits that you're making in your garage or whatever it might be uh, but you need to promote your search engine and this is through search engine optimization and uh, the SEO as it's known uh, and there 
a considerable amount of time and effort in the background going on uh, at a lot of websites to promote them to make sure they appear at the top of searches and they pop up where consumers might see them or people who need them might see them and I've just uh, grabbed a few screen grabs from that uh, this page search engine watch which uh, you know although it does have a commercial bias it keeps an eye on what's going on uh, and uh, a story from today you know, the right to be forgotten Google uh, is as you may know is uh, has been ordered if people wish to take information out of their search engines they must do so so not everything can be searched and some things need to be forgotten uh, and Google is struggling with this at the moment so uh, looking for information is not the same for everyone uh, we put search terms into uh, search engines and we just kind of hope for the best uh, or if we're a little smarter perhaps or we're more strategic we enter a URL and we go to a website or we have a bookmark or that kind of thing or we go to somewhere like the National Library of Medicine and we hit the link there uh, the scale of a web search is way beyond traditional information retrieval as I say from a library or something like that the web is so very dynamic there's so much going on it's changing constantly uh, if we go back to that graph about Ebola or B or the gene B or C A, that's evidence of that. Uh, there's huge amounts of duplication of data. Data has been copied. It's been repurposed, uh, plagiarized in many cases. Um, the quality is not uniform, and the range of topics on the web is so open. There's so much uh, that can be linked together. We could have heart disease and yoga, heart disease and diet, heart disease and uh, uh, oh, I don't know, sleep or sleep apnea. So we've got topics tied together and there's so many topics they can, it's so wide and open. We tend to, uh, if we look at this graphically, we're over here as the searcher and we want to end up uh, with a result. And you know, traditionally uh, we could go to a library and look something up. Uh, the most of the time people go through search engines or some kind of gateway or directory and end up with a result or if you're in uh, a research purely research environment you're looking at what's going on uh, locally you go through a medical database so what we're trying to handle is uh, getting this lower quality information with more results towards higher quality with less results uh, there is a snapshot of the library. Go look. Uh, there is uh, links for resources on the web. Uh, they, these are websites picked out by librarians uh, specifically uh, for either students or staff in the schools. So these are real people working, assessing, publishing links online. Uh, you may wish to look at this site and it looks pretty poor in terms of uh, design uh, but is the health on the net foundation and you look back there it's actually linked health on the net on that page uh, a non-profit non-governmental organization accredits the economic and social council of the united nations there's very good credentials folks on essential critical provision of health information to citizens uh, information that respects ethical standards uh, very interesting little boring in terms of design perhaps and maybe not what we're used to but very very good high quality information uh, another place to go and to start looking and I've already given students uh, information on subscribing to e-journals uh, the professional organization the British Medical Association, the American Medical Association, the Irish, whatever, there are plenty of them. Look at your own local um, uh, sources for this information, but there will be professional bodies linked to what you're interested in. Uh, and they will have links in them, and of course you need to be cognizant of uh, the currency, how up to date these links are. Uh, maybe the quality may vary and you're making those decisions around these links are a good set of links or these links aren't so uh, you need to make those decisions uh, yourself and on that note uh, if I were to ask you the following questions how would you find them out 
Um, where would you go? You could type this here. How tall is the Eiffel Tower? Straight into Google uh, and you would get an answer. The question is, is it correct? Uh, how do you know it's correct? Uh, people say, oh, it was on Wikipedia. But how do you know that Wikipedia is correct? Um, is there a website for the Eiffel Tower? Would you trust that more than you would trust uh, Wikipedia? I don't know. You're going to have to make those decisions. Whereas Wikipedia is a fantastic source to aggregate information. We need to get to a situation where we have um, good quality information referenced well. Uh, how many people live in Dublin? There is published census data for that. Uh, the Irish Census Bureau would have that information. Uh, if we get into things more academic, if I asked you to define pharmacology, uh, again, the pull of Wikipedia is quite strong here. Well, why not go to uh, the medical dictionary in Medline Plus to look at that? Uh, where would you find a good diagram of the Krebs cycle? What are the key functions of the kidney? Where do you go for that information? Uh, and if you to try, try a couple of sites for this information, particularly these questions here, um, how many people live in Dublin, whatever, try them. Okay, look at Wikipedia, look at another source. Is it exactly the same? And if you were to try seven or eight or ten different locations, it could be that you're going to get different answers, which should provoke you into thinking, I need to find one good way to find good information and stick with it. The issue, of course, with using keyword search engine, like Google is a keyword search engine, is that we get a quantitative large amount, most biggest, uh, of information, millions of links, uh, and really what we're trying to do is get quality, a qualitative assessment. We need to look into the data and not just we, there's a thousand results or a million results. Uh, we want to get the most relevant results and uh, we want a precision in our searching. So the thing about Google or Bing or anything like that, uh, we get these spiders, as I say, they uh, go all around the web, they pick it up whether it's good or not, uh, they're fast, they're easy, uh, you know, pretty straightforward to pick up specific information, uh, I need a phone number for Aer Lingus or you know, as I, it, whatever it might be, what time does the local swimming pool show that, very straightforward, very easy, uh, but on the negative side, uh, it only shows you what's out there on the public internet, so Google has limits. It's not going to be able to search anything. Very good information is often invisible to it. Uh, behind firewalls, behind subscriptions, uh, institutional information that wouldn't be publicly available. And there's too much irrelevancy and low quality information. Uh, so, uh, and look at it there. The most popular ser top search engines I put in. So there's lots of people. Again, this goes back to the search engine optimization issue. Uh, trying to say my search engine is better than yours. Uh, there were uh, what, 230 million results for this in uh, was last year. Uh, is that good? Oh, that's got smaller. Anyway, that, that's this year, 2014. Uh, this is the same site is turning up. Uh, impossible to say. Uh, Google may have uh, the other search engines beaten in terms of design and ease of use and ubiquity. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's giving us a superior set of results because only we can consider what is a superior set of results based on what we're trying to search. I looked at this. That's, that's uh, information has come from another screen grab. Apologies. But again, the 15 most popular search engines in October 2014, uh, Google, Bing, you're nothing surprising there whatsoever. But again, uh, I'm a little skeptical of this information uh, from the, uh, there's advertising on this site, what's going on, what's there, uh, this uh, Google advert, look at that straight away. So Google's top, I'm sure it is, I'm sure the information is true, but cluttered but this is not a scientific study uh, <clears throat> what I do like about this is the best search engine you're probably not using and you get these claims DuckDuckGo 
who knows what's going on there uh, but I think what I'm trying to get across is let's try and use other methodologies to search for course information uh, there is another list nothing unusual there there's so much information here uh, we need to refine our search and what we're getting down to here is uh, lists of academic databases and search engines and you can see here there are many many lists uh, this will change uh, frequently but you can see here uh, academic database subscription 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 money money free there's one so a lot of the good quality information is hidden by paywalls so let's take a step back again um, if you're looking for something try something else try a couple of tactics uh, know what you're after and check the spelling for example pediatric spelled uh, two different ways uh, if you like a European and American spelling uh, so we get nearly twice the amount of results depending on how we uh, spell it in Google and we get the set more or less the same in Medline Plus a lot less but the same so straight away we could see that Google uh, we are getting much better results here it is Medline Plus is considering the spelling difference and we're getting filtered peer-reviewed results if you are using Google you may wish to dig into uh, the advanced search in Google and there are a number of issues or a number of uh, techniques you can apply to refine a search uh, and I would advise you to spend a little bit of time looking at this because it is very very useful particularly when it comes to looking for images that are copyright free but we'll get back to that in another le lesson so let's say we're after an issue uh, so what would I advise you to do uh, so firstly try more than one search engine uh, explore terminology right so most biggest largest uh, highest uh, percentage whatever it might be uh, and if you're not sure the term type define colon and a word and just understand the terminology you're looking for uh, if you're using an advanced feature set you can put in inverted commas which puts multiple words in inverted commas uh, will search only for that string of text you could have a search in plus uh, a pediatric plus surgery or pediatric minus the surgery without the surgery so you can limit your search like that I want to find things uh, that include or exclude other terminologies uh, always keep an eye on the search see what's going on look at the numbers you're getting uh, look at the URL where you are uh, sometimes and only sometimes the first uh, results pay to be placed and you've got to be careful of that although in Google more and more you'll see the little advertising logo beside searches uh, that's not necessarily evident uh, as I say there is a lot of money being spent on search engine optimization commercial services which aim to promote uh, a search engine or a service on a search engine if you're not getting anywhere after a 10 or 15 minutes, stop and think again so you need to one thing you will need to do is to read the search engine is not going to jump up and bite you it's not going to be really immediately evident you're going to have to evaluate what you're doing and that is the key to a lot of this is actually I need to think about what I've got and is it of any use uh, you can say, say search by phrases and you see peptic ulcer disease therapies you can put those string together put them in inverted commas uh, uh, search all words anywhere on a page but that's one of millions in Google but if we go peptic ulcer and disease therapies and you can see they're both in inverted commas it drastically reduces the numbers I am pretty sure those numbers would be bigger uh, this data may be a little bit out of date but you get the idea so your construction of your uh, the search is uh, a little different than just typing it straight in uh, of course it if you don't have the correct language if you're not using the correct terminology uh, you 
may end up in uh, being a little lost and not getting what you want. Uh, so you need to get the search terms uh, that they will determine what you get obviously. So you need to be able to think of the correct terms or alternative terms and as I said before with paediatrics maybe there are alternative spellings. But if you're not sure of terms or how to spell them, look them up in something called the uh, MeSH database. Uh, so uh, the, here we go. It's For example, rheumatism is a connective tissue disease, rheumatic diseases, rheumatoid arthritis. These are um, connected terms, uh, analgesia, anesthesia, you see the two spellings there, epidural anesthesia, all together. So uh, this is very specific medical terminology. And MeSH terms are medical subject headings. Uh, and they are produced by the National Library of Medicine and are a controlled uh, vocabulary thesaurus used for indexing articles in PubMed. So if your an article has been put into PubMed, it needs to be categorized correctly. This is maintained and updated uh, by the National Library of Medicine uh, and it also is used to catalog all the books in the National Library of Medicine. It can be browsed, downloaded free of charge and they also produce a printed version once a year. So take a look there. Really, I want you to go and look at this website. This is an important concept medical subject headings. There's also a very short YouTube video about searching PubMed with medical subject headings and just as important to show you how it's applied in a uh, research context searching a subject. There it is, uh, the site. As I say, I want you to visit this. Uh, just take a look around. It's huge. Uh, you can see they're already releasing for next year. Uh, you can Pick up some information, an introduction to MeSH. Have a look at that topic there. Um, now, we just want to get into uh, this. The final subject here in this lecture is something we can call or is termed the deep web. Uh, and this, uh, it's a pretty blanket phrase, but refers to information really that Google or any other search engine would have difficulty or cannot see. Uh, and usually this is in databases. Uh, so these databases, the information is stored in a very structured way. Um, and we can't actually get this information until you type in a query. And to a degree, uh, the uh, it's inaccessible by automated uh, searches by Google. The, the, uh, the spiders or the uh, robots that Google send out to query information. So the important thing is it's distinct from the static, it's, it, it is distinct from static web pages. Uh, so, and web pages like this are easily uh, accessed directly. And a significant amount of valuable information on the web is generated from databases. Um, and this is maybe 500 times or more the amount of information we can see looking through Google or Bing is available only on the deep web. Also don't forget there are a number of untagged and unsearchable uh, information sources, sources such as files and software and documents that uh, unless somebody has actually put tags against pictures, film, that kind of, you can't search them so you don't know they're there. Uh, so this is a vast area. It has been uh, likened to uh, deep sea diving. And here we are, just the internet as we know it. We're up to about a thousand meters. And way down here beneath it is the deep web. Uh, we've got, if you like, if we go down two routes here, the visible web, search engines, directories, all those kind of things here. Examples made available from libraries, but the invisible web, specialized databases, some of them are free and some of them are not. And this is much, much bigger and occupies this space here. Uh, students will go to the library source, uh, library pages in the college uh, you're located in, and logging on and using uh, some library services requires a password 
and I suppose the easiest way to put it is Google doesn't have that password. Um, so the <coughs> amount of information here is growing exponentially. Um, in fact, it's growing much faster than the normal visible web in many ways because it's un in our, and it is unindexed. Uh, it's almost impossible to put a handle on it, although people are trying because obviously there is a potential for commercial exploitation there. Uh, other examples of information that would be in it, would retail information, shopping, uh, travel sites, auctions, classified, transactions, uh, you know, a lot of that information certainly shouldn't be public, but this is all going on behind closed doors. Certainly, if you buy something uh, using uh, or mention a commercial site using your Gmail account, you will have noticed that uh, the ads start to appear then within your Gmail account. So Google wants you to go to the other commercial sites that it knows you may be visiting. So it's obviously digging into Gmail there uh, and making that information available to itself. Um, lots of different databases. Can you imagine financial institutions or business records or indeed medical and patient information? Huge issues there. And uh, a lot of census and climactic data would be locked up and only selectively released by governments or the agencies that collect them. Um, this is the, uh, the the reference here for this is uh, beyond Google, the invisible web in the academic library. It's an interesting paper, but perhaps a little bit beyond this lecture and the scope of the course. If you're interested, please go and take it out and read it. I have to uh, sound a note of caution here that uh, the be careful. It's uh, there's a lot going on on the deep web that is undesirable, uh, unethical, and illegal, also. And uh, we, w it would be remiss of me, and uh, certainly foolish, not to mention that uh, there is a short article here, uh, which goes into uh, this. Uh, there, there are plenty of other sources, but uh, I should sound that note of caution with you. Uh, there are plenty of examples online of people hi uh, indeed hiding out online, that kind of thing. So uh, it is a subject and an area to approach with caution. And uh, with uh, e there are certainly ethical and moral considerations when you do so. Um, this is the RCSI library Moodle page. Take a look in there if you'd like to follow on for some of the library information. This uh, page is uh, replicated in uh, Bahrain, to, so I'm localized in Bahrain, and there are other resources in uh, Penang. So don't forget, we need to get, uh, we have decreasing quality on the public web, and uh, it increases as we get up to medical journals with increasing authority, validity, and reliability. Um, so go and look at the local library sources, uh, look at the um, medical subject headings. I've given you a link there. That is important information that you understand that. Uh, try the same medical search on a few different websites, uh, PubMed, um, Medline Plus, health information on the net. Look at the library sites and pick them out. And indeed, if you are located in Bahrain, Penang, Dublin, uh, look at the RCSI library site in Dublin or the Bahrain library site or whatever. There, there will be open areas in those library sites which, which will give you access to uh, this information. And also look how you might refine your own search techniques. How are you going to get better skills to find better information more quickly? Thank you very much.